Hi Jacqueline and everybody at Barnaby Lab. I'm really pleased to be part of this. I think it's an absolutely great project that you've got there. Um, Barnaby Rogers is a terrific novel. It's full of mystery and excitement and surprise. Uh, I'm so pleased you're reading it together. And I'm very honoured to be, to be part of this, this wonderful project. So, Jacqueline's asked me to talk about the first five chapters of the book. Uh, of course, it's so interesting, I keep wanting to talk about the later stuff. I'm going to try and be really disciplined and just talk about those, those first five, which set up so much that comes up later in the book. So, the first thing is the title, Barnaby Rudge. So, Barnaby's at its centre, he's a slightly mysterious character. Um, he's, an, he's called an idiot, so we don't know quite how mentally strong he is, but also he seems to have this kind of poetic insight too. But the subtitle matters as well. So it's a tale of the riots of 80. Dickens writes this novel in the 1840s and he sets it back in time about 60 years and that's the classic period of time that you, in the period people wrote historical novels. So it's the 1780s, so it's going back to the time of your grandparents or your great-grandparents to try and understand the world that you're in and the way that the lives of these particular individuals relate to bigger public history and social history, to things like wars and revolutions and here, riots. Now at the moment, particularly like maybe for the first half of the book, um, there's not much big politics, big history in it. It seems at first a much more limited thing. But don't worry, that's going to come, and it's going to come in a big way. So it's about the way that these ordinary lives get swept up in these massive historical forces. So you set it back 60 years. It's the period just before the French Revolution, um, the first year of the American War of Independence, 1775. That's when the, the opening scene happens. So it's a world that's held in, that's um, oppressive. If you look at the, that opening scene in the pub, my God, it's a boring place to be. You know, now, English pubs are, are pretty much like that now, if you go to the country. They're full of these boring old men having boring conversations. And sure enough, that's what we get here. And you see the way that the sun, so it's a novel with lots of fathers and sons and oppressed young people in it. You see the way that the sun... Joe Willett is held down by his father. So there's always, right from the start of the novel, this sense that something might burst out. And of course we'll see all that bursting out. The other thing about that first chapter is, it's full of mystery. Who is the mysterious stranger? And he turns up later, um, several times. He's very curious about a set of uh, events that have happened even further back in the past. So you go back 60 years and then you go back another 22 years. So nearby to the Maypole Inn is a great big house called the Warren. Now this is a really important name for Dickens because when he was a boy his father went to prison. Um, Dickens is 12 and is sent out to work and the place he worked was called Warren's Blacking Warehouse. So anything called the Warren and we know now already in the first chapter it's a place where, where a murder happens is going to be somewhere dark and important for the book. But it's mysterious. Somebody committed a murder, we don't know who. On the same night, Rudge, the steward, disappeared. They find his body later, but he's unrecognisable. It's only his clothing that makes you, you, makes you know, or makes them think that he's, al he's dead. So he may be still alive. And then there's this mysterious figure who keeps haunting the book, almost like a ghost himself. So in many ways, it's like a historical novel but it's also like a gothic novel, particularly at the beginning. It's full of mystery, terror, ghosts, haunting. What And both of those things, historical novels, gothic novels, about the power of the past to influence the present. And that's what Dickens is exploring in the book. So what else to look out for? Well, look out. There's two young sets of young lovers, you'll see. There's Emma Haredale and Edward Chester. Another person with a bad father. It's was a novel full of bad fathers, of bad dads who oppress their sons. Uh, and then there's, there's Dolly Varden, who's got a good father, Gabriel Varden, um, and her romance, or possible romance, with Joe Willett. What else to look for? Well, Gabriel Varden matters. Originally the book is going to be called Gabriel Varden, the Locksmith of London, so he matters. And perhaps the one other thing I'd say is you know, we think novels are about people, but this one has got an animal quite near its centre, a very strange talking raven uh, called Grip. So watch out for Grip, because he'll keep coming back in the book. 
Um, it can be at times quite a challenging novel. Um, I hope the notes I wrote are useful. And there's also a glossary, just a list of words that you wouldn't normally come across uh, that you find in the novel. And the final thing I'd suggest that you do is look at the pictures. So it's an, we often think of picture books or illustrated books as for children. That wasn't the case in this period. And this is, I think, probably one of the best illustrated of all Dickens novels. It's got more pictures, I think, than any other. Um, now, the pictures don't tell you what to think about the book. They're an interpretation of it, but it's one of, they're, they're rich and they're interesting and they help, I think, to, to provoke you to think, is this character like that, like this picture? Uh, is it different? Why is, why is this particular scene being illustrated? If we look at the detail, what does it tell us? So think of it as a, as a great historical novel, a great Gothic novel, a great pictorial novel too. I really hope you enjoy it. Um, uh, I had a lot of fun editing it. Um, I've always enjoyed rereading it. It's full of surprises. Um, and at the beginning, it's about mystery. All those threads that will run through the rest of the book, they're at work already. Thanks a lot, and good luck. Bye.